Well, we are making some serious progress now. This is lesson 26. Uh, two more to go before exam two rolls around. Uh, so we are really coming down to it. Big ideas are starting to come into place. Uh, we have looked for most of our course at derivatives, but in this lesson, we start to look at antiderivatives. So here's how Strang brings us into the topic. A function capital F is an antiderivative of the function little f if capital F prime is little f for all x in the domain of little f. Uh, the choice is deliberate here. The choice of a capital F and a lowercase f, those choices are deliberate. The function that we're focused on is little f. The antiderivative is capital F. The antiderivative depends on little f, so it is a capital F usually, that's how we usually write it. Capital letters represent antiderivatives of lowercase letters. Um, there's a theorem, and the theorem is super important. So we let capital F be an antiderivative of little f. And then some language pops up that popped up when we talked about the mean value theorem and the corollaries to the mean value theorem that we said in class would be really important. Here is one of them. For each constant c, the function capital F of x plus c is also an antiderivative of little f. Why? Because if you take the derivative of capital F and then you take the derivative of capital F plus a constant, well, the derivative of that constant is zero, so the derivative of capital F plus C is the same as the derivative of capital F. And then if capital G is some antiderivative of little f, then there is a constant for which capital G is capital F plus that constant over the interval. In other words, the most general form of the antiderivative over any interval is capital F plus a constant. Uh, we talked in class about why this is true. The plus C just refers to a vertical shift. So if capital F looks like this, then moving capital F up and down doesn't affect the slopes at all. It just affects the vertical placement. So the plus C is necessary uh, because it refers to a family of functions, all of whose derivatives are the same. So, find the general antiderivative. The general antiderivative. And, and I have three to consider. Um, one is f of x equals 2x, one is g of x equals cos x, and one is h of x equals radical x, looking for general antiderivatives. So how do we do this? Well, we think to ourselves, what is a function whose derivative is 2x? Well, this 2 would have come from up here, maybe x squared. Yeah, the derivative of x squared, that's 2x. So the antiderivative of 2x, that's x squared. But not just x squared, any vertical shift will do, plus a constant. Uh, what about cosine x? Well, we think about things whose derivatives are cosine x. There are lots of functions whose derivatives are cosine x, but the most basic one is sine x. And then that sine x can be moved up or down plus a constant. And then h of x, well that's a that's a doozy. So this is x to the one half. So how did this one half get to be? Well something came down in front and then some exponent was decreased by one and it ended up at one half. So it must have been that the thing that was up here was one greater. And so then how would that have worked? This three halves would have come down in front, but, but there's no number in front here. There's no number in front here. Why? Because the three halves got met with something that neutralized it. And that something is two-thirds. 
think about that for a moment. I will pause. Okay, I hope you paused it. I hope you went back and took a look. Um, we have a symbol to to represent this general antiderivative, and this is a box right out of Strang's book, the indefinite integral of little f. And it's denoted this way. This is an integral symbol. It's an elongated S for reasons that we'll talk about in the coming days. So we write the integral of f of x dx. The integral, the integral always ends with this dx thing for reasons that we'll talk about in the next few lessons. So when you see the integral symbol and the dx, that means that we are taking the most general antiderivative of this little f that's sitting right here. And so the integral of f of x dx is the most general antiderivative of little f. That's how that works. So uh, find the indefinite integrals. And I have, I have some to consider. Uh, the integral of x dx, uh, the integral of x squared dx, the integral of x cubed dx, and then generalize. So I think we can do this. I think we can do this. We're looking for the most general antiderivative of x. So what kinds of things have derivatives of, of x? Well, it would have had to have been a power that's one bigger, so that's x squared. But when the 2 comes down in front, th there's no 2 there. There's a 1 there. So this 2 came down and got neutralized by something to, to leave only the 1 in front. So that 2 met a 1 half plus a constant. And the same kind of thought process happens over here, looking for an antiderivative of x squared. Antiderivative of x squared is going to have to have an x cubed in it. But when we go to check, when we take the derivative here, this 3 comes down in front. There's no 3 here. There's a 1 here. So the 3 got neutralized by something like that. And then this won't take very long. The antiderivative x cubed probably has an x to the fourth in it, but that 4 comes down. There's no 4 out here. There's a 1 out here. So the 4 got neutralized by something. So, so really, what's going on? Take 10 seconds. Think about it. So what happens? This is what we, we would refer to as the power rule for antiderivatives. This is something you want in your back pocket. Uh, so when we get to class, we're going to use these things. But I want to make sure that you can do some of these. Uh, so let's evaluate the indefinite integrals. I've got two of them. I've got the integral of 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 6x plus 4 dx. And I've got the integral of 1 over cosine squared x dx. Uh, so those are a couple of things to think about. When we gather in class, I have things I want to do with these, uh, but for now it's just important to have the skill in place. All right, we'll see you then.